ever wondered what Yoda would look like as a Tudor princess? No, me either. Until I made it so. G'day everyone, it's Kiralee here. So today's video is all about how I made Tudor Yoda. Look, it's a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie. But I had so much fun making it and cosplay and costuming is all about exploring and experimenting and having fun and I did that. So the idea for Tudor Yoda actually came from my friend Diana or Blinksy Cosplay uh, because I was meant to be coming to WonderCon and there was going to be a group of us doing Tudor Star Wars characters and I was so excited as you may find out from the video a little bit later on but then heartbreak. But even with my heart in pieces I decided to carry on and complete the cosplay. So the cosplay took me 50 hours to complete. Now I know it took me 50 hours to complete because I kept a log of it in my bullet journal breaking down each of the bits you know separate. However I will say that one of the things that I did to cut down my hours was that I used this pattern. Now this pattern by Simplicity is very very easy to use. I actually just got rid of the instructions and just used it as the pattern pieces. After a quick mock up I was good to go. So no, it's not historically accurate, but at the end of the day, it's Tudor Yoda. I don't think you can necessarily be historically accurate with that as your starting point. So enough of me babbling on, I'm sure you just want to get to the construction of the garment. Just a heads up in terms of some of the voicing of the clips you're about to see. Some of it was taken directly from the camera when I was doing more vlogging style and some of it was done as a voiceover afterwards. Anyway, enjoy the video. I'll see you at the end for the outro and also some pictures of the finished garment. G'day everyone, it is currently about 55 days until we leave, uh, or 54 days until we leave and like 55 days until like WonderCon, uh, and I have just finished the mock-up of my Yoda Tudor outfit. So there's a few things that I need to play around with because of issues with the fabric that I'm using. Uh, I'm trying to use just stuff from my stash. Um, and like the main fabric is this beautiful green G Peony silk that I've had for a while um, and this is just the perfect project to use it on. I'm going for a stylish swamp hag look so hopefully I can achieve that but I'm happy with how it's all going in terms of the mock-up so now it's time to rip this bad boy into pieces and um, start piecing together all of it from real fabric so Wish me luck! Why hello and welcome to the voiceover. So now I'm just cutting out the pieces from the real fabric. I skipped over cutting out the silk as I was a little stressed out at that stage. But here you can see me cutting out the lining pieces. So you know, it's the same process. And all of the fabric pieces are now cut out. Yay! So these are the skirt pieces over here. That's the sleeves and the bodice over there. So now it's on to assembly. I really love these colours. But before assembly, it was actually time to do some prep work like ironing and ironing in the interfacing to the bodice's lining. Although technically not historically accurate, I used the iron-on stuff because it was easy and I had it on hand. And a little more prep work, adding the boning channels. I did this with some cotton tape, just leaving the bottoms open so I could add in the bones. And speaking of bones, that was the next step. I measured out each length from synthetic whalebone, took off about two centimeters to allow for the seam allowances and also to allow for some ease, and then rounded off the corners before inserting them in. They did have a little bit of a natural curve because they were actually in like a roll. So what I did was I ironed them out and left them under some heavy books whilst they were cooling down into shape. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the bones to straighten out, um, I went ahead and I played around with doing some of the detail work. And I really want to put some gems on this, but I didn't really, I, I wasn't really digging like the normal gems so much, which is like all in here, it's like these things. Which, like, they're nice, and, like, you know, it would work, but 
this is the biggest that this comes in and I wanted something a bit bigger. So I was playing around with um, this and what this is, is this is actually a Sprite bottle uh, cap and a Diet Coke bottle cap that I've melted. Um, I've got a tutorial about how I did that. That should be up by now. Um, and then I pressed it into a silicon mold that I have, which is this. So put it in there and these frames I know fit this one. So yeah, I, I'm really digging that. I think that that looks quite Yoderish. I think it has a bit of like a jade or um, something kind of feel about it, which I really, really like. And I love the fact that it's using recyclable uh, materials. So I think I'm going to go ahead and play around more with this. I'm also going to, when I get some more bottle lids, lids I'm going to play around with casting a small round circle two times over at least and fill these ones up. And of course, I'm going to be painting these gold to match the gold on the that I'm planning on using on the trim. So that's my game plan. Whew, it's exciting. I love it. Now with the bones in the bodice and all straightened out, I began the process of flatlining the bodice by surging all the edges together. This felt a little bit weird because I don't normally construct my bodices like this, but it was like that in the instructions and it was very quick, so I'm not complaining. Okay, so a bit of an update. Uh, last night I just kind of went full on with sewing, so sorry there's no update from last night directly. But I flatlined everything and then what I've done is I've sewn the facing uh, into the front pieces, which is also the collar pieces, and now I just need to go in and whip stitch the edges down on the inside. Um, I've also attached the back pieces together and yeah, now after I do this, then what I've got to do is I've got to um, sew the shoulder seams to the front and the collar, and that's a bit tricky, but once I do that, it should be smooth sailing. Fingers crossed. <laughs> is it just me, or is whip stitching quite therapeutic? Just me? Oh, okay then. <laughs> All right, so I've got the bodice pretty much all sewn together in terms of base, um, and I'm really, really liking it. Um, it fits really nicely. At the moment, it's just pinned at the front, uh, the next kind of section after the sleeves. Probably, actually, not the next section. It's gonna be sleeves, do this, the overskirt, and then once I know how that all sits, then I will put the closure in at the front. But yeah, it fits, and I'm happy, so yay. And just like the bodice, we begin by flatlining the sleeves by surging the edges together before I sew it all together. And at this point, I realised that I didn't film a lot to do with the sleeve construction. But I'll let you in on a little secret. It was two pieces that were sewn together. I know, crazy, right? But I did manage to remember to capture this creation of the little wrist ruffle. You knew I was going to get at least one ruffle or box pleat in, didn't you? Okay, so the bodice is now done. I apologize that there really isn't all that much footage of me putting the sleeves in and sleeves in general. I just kind of got in a groove and I was in a positive headspace, so I just kind of went with it. Um, it's really fitting quite nicely. I've got lots of arm movement. Anyone who cosplays knows that good arm movement is king. So now, on to the skirt. Yes, and as we go on to the skirt, First, we need to iron out all the pieces. Then I pinned and sewed all the pieces together of the outer skirt. I did sew them with a French seam, and that's because I didn't like the idea of the silk frame, nor did I like the idea of the skirt not being lined and you being able to see an overlock kind of finish within the garment. However, I did overlock the bottom as I was going to turn that up and hide all the stitching. All right, so a little bit of an update. The skirt is attached. Well, the outer skirt. I'm still gonna make the underskirt, which I'm definitely going to be doing uh, after lunch and after I do some filming, because I've still got to film some YouTube videos. It's so happening. But yes, I am loving this. It is actually pretty level, that hem, so I just need to hem it up with a very, very small hem allowance. Uh, but other than that, the outer skirt is complete. So yes, I, like, I'm seriously so excited because I am 
really, really digging this. I feel a little bit like Kate Blanchett in like Elizabeth or Elizabeth II. I, like it's just, uh, I, I am, I am honestly loving how easily this is coming together. It, it makes me very, very happy. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to stop, have lunch, do the filming and then get back on it so I can do the underskirt, hem this, hem that. And then all that will be left to create the base will be put a hook and eye closure down the front here. And then I can go on trimming and starting the ears and all of that other good stuff. Yay! Now onto the underskirt. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the brown in this light? Oh, it's so pretty. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I cut the center panel and the two side panels next to it out of the silk and then the four side and back panels out of a cheaper lining. Here I am pinning it. And then it is sewing time. I did this with French seams too. I do a lot of French seams in my sewing now that I think about it. Then I serge slash overlocked, I'm using the word interchangeably here, the bottom and the top to stop the raw seams from fraying before gathering it down to the waistband that I made out of a twill tape. I used a hook and bar as a closure. Okay, so the base dress is essentially done. Uh, the underskirt is still just a little bit long, so I just need to hem that up, maybe two or three centimeters more, not a big deal. Uh, and I need to do the front hook and eye closures, which I've got some tape for. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this is looking. Uh, so I'm gonna go to bed now because it's late, uh, but tomorrow I shall start with the next section, which I'm excited for because it's the ears. Okay, so everything that's set up here is all for the Yoda ears. Um, <laughs> there seems to be a lot, a lot more than my normal tutorials, but that's okay because it's all going to work. And hopefully by the time that this goes up, in fact, I'm going to say by the time that this goes up, the Yoda ear tutorial will be up and you would have already seen this. Maybe, hopefully, if not, check it out. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get cracking on this. Okay, so a slightly annoying thing happened, and that is that my wig did not arrive uh, when it was meant to. Uh, it is the 1st of March, and it was meant to have arrived by the 1st of March, and I've got the ears pretty much to a point where I need to paint them, but I can't paint them until I know sort of the colouring of the actual wig in person, because I want them to match as much as possible. So what that means is that as this is a long weekend and today is Sunday, um, I am going to work on trimming the dress and making the, the belt. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so update, I am terrible at uh, the progress of this, but I have pinned and hand stitched all of the main trim uh, onto the dress and it's looking a lot more regal, which is lovely. And now I'm just working on the belt, which is here, still in pieces. But that's okay, because we're going to make it into something special right now. Something special involved me pinning a second type of gold trim I used for this project to one layer of silk, sewing it down and then sewing that piece to a second piece of silk so that I could enclose the raw seams. All right, so this is where we're up to. Uh, the trim has all been hand sewn on. The belt has been made and completed. Uh, the next step will be the gems for the belt and also uh, the brooch. I've decided to leave the collar kind of free of jewels and trim. I was thinking about that for a bit. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna leave this like I am doing the underskirt so it all ties it together. But that's basically pretty much all that I'll be doing to the dress as such. So I'm still waiting for the wig to arrive. Uh, it's very, very frustrating. Once I've got the wig, then I continue with the ears and then I can make the veil. And then this costume will be done. But I am really digging this. I'm really, really liking this. Um, and it's nice to have a... Um, you know, a Tudor or Elizabethan kind of outfit just in my wardrobe, just in case, you know, something comes up. You never know. You never know. Here I am working on those gems made from plastic bottle caps mounted on spray painted gold cameos. <laughs> ah, the magic is gone now. I know. 
and since I had some extra time and a whole lot of spare fancy beads at my disposal, I decided to beat up my belt. You know, who says that Yoda can't be a little bit extra? It is currently Wednesday the 4th of March and the dress is now completely done. Yay! So all of the belt now has beading all over it and it's looking real fancy. Let's just see if I can get a bit of a close up. So all of the belt has the beads. I'm really happy with how it has turned out. So now it's just the ears and the veil. All right, so I'm on to the veil now and what I'm doing is I've cut like a kind of circle on the bottom and yeah, this is just a bit of scrap organza. I have no idea where it's from, um, but it goes really well with my project, so I'm gonna use it. Anyone who has ever worked with organza knows how much it frays and how quickly it frays. So I wanted to nip that in the bud and I did a rolled hem around the outside. Now onto the crest. My wonderful hubby Terry helped me draw out this Jedi Order logo to the size that it needed to be. I sticky taped it together and cut out the template. I cut out the backing circles in some of that spare brown silk off camera and then I cut out some heat and bond squares and ironed those onto the green silk. I used my template to draw the inner design directly onto the backing paper of the heat and bond. And then I cut those out. I then peeled off the heat and bond backing centralized it on top of the circle and ironed it down. This fused the two layers together. Finally, I did a satin stitch around the edges in gold to really make it pop. Just as a side note though, a lot of people don't do the satin stitching and finish it with just adhering the two pieces of fabric together, which is really lovely as well. However, if you do this, make sure you use the heat and bond non-sewable or original, I think it's called. If you want to sew over the top of it, use heat and bond sewable or light. If you use the original sort and sew over it, your thread will break every few stitches as your needle glugs up and you'll be tearing out your hair. Please trust me, I have done this. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. All right, so a little bit of an update. Um, what I've done is I've done the sand stitching on this one um, around the symbol. It's okay. I definitely have learned a few things from this. So um, it's been about a year and a half, two years since I last did satin stitching. So I'm a little bit rusty and I can see so many flaws in this. <laughs> um, but basically I've loosened the tension completely as much as I can. Uh, so that when I tried this one, which is actually a slightly better like quality than what this one was. Um, hopefully it will be better. And then I can compare the two and decide how I'm going to place them and how I'm gonna put, put them on the um, headscarf. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so the second one has just been completed. I think it turned out much better than the first one. Um, still getting used to it, but that's all good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rip off, and it's super satisfying, um, the uh, stabilizer. So it's just a sew and tear. Ugh, it's so much, it's so, so satisfying. So what I've just done is I've taken off all the stabilizer, I'm going to give it a nine and then I'm going to put the heat and bond on the other side of this uh, and then I'm going to attach it to the veil and then I'll do a satin stitch around the circle. So that's the plan. All right, so what it is is that this is the right side of the applique and I actually scorched the silk here and here and a little bit here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some rhinestones to try and cover that and to make it a little bit sparkly, but also the fabric that I'm using because I just was using what was in my stash, it actually has a few like marks and imperfections. So I'm actually going to do a bit of a rhinestone placement, a bit of a scatter all over the veil here and hopefully that will cover it but also add some nice features to the veil and I've got the time so I'm gonna do it. 
So after I scattered all the rhinestones, which I forgot to shoot because my camera battery was charging, I decided I could make one more thing to go with my outfit. So basically this evening I have been making this bag out of scraps um, because it's good to have something I can carry around my mobile phone in that will kind of go with the outfit. But today, ta-da, I finished the veil and I'm very happy with it. Um, lots of different sparkles on it. So do two different types of green rhinestones are on there. Plus I've used like yellow ones on the actual applique itself. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. So now all I need to do is make the ears or rather finish the ears because I'm still waiting for the wig, but it's arrived in Sydney finally. So it's at least in the country. Uh, so hopefully I will be getting that this week or early next week. And that means I can paint it all up, attach this to the ears and then it will be done. But in the meantime, what I will be doing, will I, I will be <laughs> just finishing this off with a bit of gold trim. Um, or I may make one that's slightly longer. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But this fits my mobile phone, but basically nothing else. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's late. I'm going to bed. Night. Okay, so today is February 14th. And uh, yesterday I got the sad news that WonderCon has been postponed which means for me um probably will not be attending given that it's in the US and I'm in Western Australia um right now I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to continue with our US trip which is you know very sad but I understand why you know coronavirus at the moment is very bad so I have to respect that um, saying that, I am so close to finishing uh, this costume that I'm going to push through and I'm going to finish it off. Um, what I finished on the 12th was this bag. So it's a little bit different to the one that I have been showing sewing was because that one was this one. And it's a different shape and also it just... Is a bit smaller and it was a little bit too small I decided and I had enough scrap to make it a bit uh, wider and a bit longer and um, just an overall easier shape so I did that and I really like how it turned out I can certainly carry stuff in it so hopefully I will still get to wear it to a convention at some point and I will have a matching bag the other thing that I finished were these two rings. So I made some of my more plastic some some more plastic molds and uh, mount them onto the uh, cameo uh, along with a, a ring so that's going to be like that so yeah that's where i'm up to uh what's left is the ears need to be completed so i'm going to do a base layer today but the wig's due to arrive on monday so i will need to wait until i get the wig so that i can then uh paint it in just using a bit more of the colors of the wig that's the plan. So we're almost there. I'm still doing a photo shoot with this um, soon. So I still want to get it done for that. And um, I'm still really proud of it. So I'm having a lot of fun with it still. So almost there. Home stretch. Let's keep going. Okay, so here we are. We've got the ears with their uh, first four coats paint on. <laughs> it took four coats to get that looking like that so I still need to add some dark green some yellows and some pinks to this um, which I'll do once the wig comes which should be tomorrow at the latest please but um, other than that I just want to show you this this is what I have left of the silk that I originally had like had to make the dress so this is all I have left of the green silk um, there was 6.3 meters and I've basically now just got like scraps over from it and this I think I've got a little under a meter left um, yeah, it's, it, it was really cutting it fine. Uh, but this actually makes me feel very happy to see this. <laughs> it's like, yes, got it. <laughs> Am I weird? Am I the only one like that? Please let me know. Okay, so the ears are now done. Uh, so literally the only thing I need to do is now attach the veil to the ends of the ears. 
and then this costume is done so I'm gonna do that and then I will have my first full try on which I'm very excited for and all of this is to be done before next weekend um, so it's Friday today so not this weekend but next weekend I have a photo shoot all scheduled fingers crossed coronavirus doesn't stop that from occurring but you know it's changing daily so we'll see oh and quickly I almost forgot I actually have a tutorial about how I made these ears which is or should be on my YouTube channel all ready to go so you know if you want to make your own go check it out and finally the last dollops of E6000s were applied to the ears to attach the veil hmm satisfying so now we have reached the end and it's now time for my feelings and also some photos. So the short of it is that I really, really enjoyed myself. I had so much fun making this and it was awesome because when I was posting the work in progress photos on Instagram and Facebook, there was a lot of love for Tudor Yoda, which was really surprising, but I was very grateful for it. And now onto some photos, which I'm going to start including now. So these photos were taken by my wonderful hubby Terry, such a trooper. He is just absolutely gold for the fact that I say, sweetie, I need to go and climb this hill and take some photos of me wearing this outfit. Oh, by the way, you're the one with the camera. And he goes, all right, hopefully you can tell by these photos just how much I really enjoyed this costume. I felt comfortable and I felt confident wearing it, even though I think there was a few kids who thought that I was some sort of variation of Princess Fiona from Shrek. I hope that you enjoyed my progress log in regards to making this crazy, wacky, mashup costume. I enjoyed myself and so much so that I am definitely going to be making more along these lines. Not necessarily Tudor and Star Wars, but history and pop culture. Yes. Once again, if you want the links to those tutorials for the gems and the ears, I will certainly be leaving them below in the description. I'll see you all next time. Bye!